Hello everyone, today I'm taking lead on Murray Sidman regarding chapter 4 on coercion and its fallout. This chapter was very interesting regarding Sidman's thought process concerning if punishments work which resulted in me thinking about things more in a greater depth. With the insight I provide, hopefully I have provided everyone with a better understanding with concepts that may be confusing. Throughout the video, I will of course state the concepts I am referring to along with their pages so you may follow along with me if you need to look back at your book to have a better insight to my understandings. With this chapter, Sidman spoke more so about the effects of punishments and the motives of implementing a punishment upon an individual. As I go through my interpretation of this chapter, I want you to think about these statements Sidman made on page 67. Why do we punish? What do we want to accomplish? Punishments can be seen as a cruel action or an action due to an individual misbehaving because they made the choice to ignore the implementation of rules. If an individual decides to rob a store, of course a punishment will be set in place resulting in participating in court and hearing the consequences of their actions. If a child misbehaves by, let's say, throwing their toys around or ignoring commands by their parents, there will be a result of maybe losing a toy or losing some sort of their day-to-day -day privileges. When we think about punishments, he made a great point on page 67 for punishment. The main reason for is to control others. Those who are reluctant to admit the possibility of behavioral control might ask themselves why they are willing to fines, prison terms, and perhaps death meted out to those who break the rules. The first concept I would like to talk about in this chapter on page 67 is what is in it for us. With this concept, after I finished reading, I believe Sidman is telling us punishments are used differently depending on the scenario. Do you agree with Sidman's statement? We punish people in the belief that we are going to get them to act differently. Along with, we punish someone whose conduct we consider bad for the community, bad for some other individuals, or bad even for the individual who is misbehaving. We want an end to undesirable conduct. In my opinion, laws are implemented for individuals who break the law, and there always needs to be this, a sense of control for those who break laws. If there are not consequences implemented, how else will society be kept in order? These punishments can either be beneficial or detrimental depending on the situation. As he stated, those who break the law are faced with going to jail or when children misbehave, an object that holds meaning to them is taken away. Unfortunately, punishments can be used differently, such as causing harm on an individual for breaking the law or a child misbehaving, but I believe it depends on the atmosphere and the authority to how punishment is implemented. Punishments can be seen as a positive effect because it can steer an individual away from repeating their actions, but they can be seen as controlling matter. In my opinion, if an individual feels as though they are constantly being controlled, it may result in them participating in bad actions once again. He also stated, actions are a result to how an individual is feeling because if they are angry, of course they will retaliate their anger, and if they're sad, they may throw a tantrum. But with punishments, it is important to find an alternative, being punishments do not always have a positive effect on individuals. The second concept I would like to talk about on page 69 is how do you study punishment? With this, there needs to be an understanding of the occurrence of bad behaviors. If there is a baseline, there is an ability in formulating factors to why individuals are misbehaving, resulting in their actions being punished. Which brings me to a statement he made, what kinds of experiments have made it possible to analyze the effects of the punishment? Think about this for a second, and maybe write down a few notes concerning your thought process with this matter. This concept was a bit confusing to me, but hopefully someone can provide me with a better understanding. I believe Sidman is stating individuals can be conditioned in displaying wanted behaviors. They are provided with positive reinforcements that allow them to generate a positive behavior and or action. Unfortunately, electric shocks can be generated on subjects, but can either be beneficial or detrimental. 
Gratefully, ABA does not participate in such actions because there are other strategies that can be more effective. But the question is, does implementing harm show a positive or negative effect on an individual? It seems as though he is stating if electric shock is going to be implemented or any other source, it is important for there to be an implementation of reasoning in order to accumulate sufficient amount of data. The third concept I would like to discuss on page 71 is what really happens. This concept states the effectiveness of the example of providing rats and food pellets. When the rats press the lever for a pellet, there is the result of receiving a shock when they are participating in such an action. In relation, when shocks are put upon others in other circumstances, it is viewed as a negative effect because instead of a positive behavior, even though it was effective with the rats, it is important to remember just because a strategy works in the beginning does not mean it will be beneficial long term. Which brings me to the question Sidman states on page 72, do punishments work? Think about that and keep your answers and opinion to yourself or feel free to share your response with classmates. There will always be circumstances to where an individual or animal will revert back to their old ways. But as he stated, there is no way of telling if a behavior is diminished unless the subject is continuously observed after the fact. As he stated, questions can circulate to why the rats participate in such behaviors the same can correlate to when human beings perform bad actions. There needs to be an abundance of questions formulated to why they perform such actions. This will help society have a better understanding and hopes of diminishing such behaviors. The question is, does severe punishment need to be implemented in order to diminish the bad behaviors when conditioning animals or human beings? Punishments that are hurtful are the last thing parents would like to participate in when punishing their child. The desired plan is to diminish the unwanted behavior in order to apply a positive reinforcement. With the shock used with the rats, what is your opinion on this matter? Do you feel as though it is beneficial? Can the similar technique be used in other circumstances with human beings? From my completion of this chapter, I believe Sidman is trying to tell us there will be, of course, consequences when rules are taken, but the question is how the matter will be taken care of. Will there be an involvement of shock therapy used like with the rats and food pellets, or will other strategies be implemented? Punishments are facilitated in order to have an, an order in society for those who break laws and children who misbehave. Lingering questions I have to be answered involve the following. One, do you believe the shock and food pellets are beneficial and how would you feel that the same experiment was used on a human being? And two, what is your viewpoint concerning punishments? Are they beneficial or not? Explain why. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my summary and understanding of this chapter, and I hope you guys are on the same mindset that I am. I can't wait to hear back from you guys.